All right, welcome back. In the last module, we got started with Azure DevOps pipeline. We configured our first pipeline using the GUI, and GUI is not only the way. However, it, if you're getting started with Azure DevOps and you want to learn that what is uh, continuous integration and delivery, how you could configure GUI is probably a good option. Um, it's not recommended uh, as always because uh, you've got your YAML as well. That's what we're going to learn today. Um, Azure also recommends you to use YAML because uh, if there are any new features, first it's going to be rolled out for YAML and then it's going to be rolled out for uh, GUI or classic way of uh, configuring CI CD. So how did we configure the CI? Uh, we created our first uh, CI which going to pick up your code from the repo, uh, be it Azure DevOps. In our case it was, uh, could be GitHub or Bitbucket or any form of Git. And then we learned how you could configure hook it up with your repo and then how you could use the by default task available uh, we did it for terraform however don't worry it's, it should be uh, pretty similar to for any other application just start picking up uh, just first thing first is like you got to know what you want to do with your continuous integration what are the libraries what are the dependencies you want to build uh, once you built it time to release it now the release in azure devops is a place where you want to deploy your code you you built your code over here, you created an artifact, and then now you know deploy onto some sort of environment, be it dev, non-prod, or prod. And that's what we did. Uh, we picked up the code from our uh, pipeline, uh, for our continuous integration pipeline, we picked up the latest code, then uh, ran a bash script, and then did init plan and apply onto our environment. We primarily use the out-of-box task which Azure gives you. This is especially ben uh, beneficial when you're just getting started and very new to DevOps world or you don't understand what's the continuous integration and delivery and this is probably the easiest way you could do it however YAML is the way forward to go because majority of the configuration uh, manager or, or wh whatever configure you configuration you want to write it's basically or majorly it's written in YAML uh, for example, uh, you take an example of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, all of your manifests are written in uh, YAML. So you got to be a little uh, okay writing uh, YAML configuration. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get started with the YAML configuration now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this, this particular integration, continuous integration pipeline into a YAML. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove the repository from here because I don't want it there are two pipelines for each repo um, and uh, interesting thing uh, if you go to any of these tasks you could see yaml as well and then you could start picking up the snippet and put that into your uh, pipeline as well i'm going to save this so that now it's not going to be auto trigger so let's get started and start writing our first yaml configuration for the repo so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to reciprocate or create a replica of whatever we have done using the GUI uh, for continuous integration. The first part would be continuous integration, nothing else. So let's get started. Uh, first thing first, let's create the Azure DevOps pipeline file. You give it a name as Azure pipelines.yaml. All right. Um, looks okay and then you get started writing it your first thing is you create a variable you put in variable and then you start defining your variable if you have your own variable good otherwise you could use azure define azure devops uh, system variable which is going to be system dot debug i want to enable system debugging so that's why i've used this uh, variable And now uh, the trigger. Trigger is the block wherein you define uh, that, okay, whenever I push to master branch, please initiate the pipeline and uh, perform whatever steps I have written, written inside, inside the pipeline. Uh, how many types of triggers are there? There are four types of trigger, pull, push, uh, schedule, pipeline. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a push trigger and you start doing by using the trigger keyword and then the batch is gonna be true and post that 
you type in okay do it for the branches uh, and which branch do you want to include you want to include master which means anything pushed onto the master branch by anybody initiate the continuous integration pipeline do you want to exclude something probably you want to exclude feature branches so any anybody pushes anything to the feature branches just don't let the pipeline trigger because feature branch are probably not the actual branch which gets deployed people use it for the development purpose so that's how you could use uh, the triggers there's also uh, some of the cool features uh, like uh, schedules uh, so let's suppose you want your pipeline to be automatically uh, trigger every four hours or five hours every week or every day what you could do is you could simply use a cron and I'm gonna use a random cron as I remember uh, so this is gonna after probably every five hours or after some interval this is gonna initiate the pipeline automatically without any intervention I want to include it for the branch uh, master and uh, yeah that's about it I'm gonna use always equals to true and then the display name which is going to be daily cron alright we're good now the important part comes up as the pool remember we use the agent pools uh, Mac OS Ubuntu uh, or, or Windows where you want this pipeline to be triggered to be run on uh, we want it to be triggered on some sort of machine right that's gonna be your pool so I'm gonna use the pool and then give it a name in fact pool should be coming just before the schedule yep now it is not throwing any error I'm gonna identize it yep looks okay hit enter VM image I want to run it on a Ubuntu machine which is gonna be the latest Ubuntu and that's all we're good so we're good with the pool now what we should get started with is the uh, pipeline actual pipeline code which we're gonna start writing how do you get started with so the hierarchy which is uh, defined into Azure DevOps is you get started with you have your pipeline this is your pipeline and then underneath it you should have a stage stage define that okay you have dev non prod and prod stage and underneath each stage you should have some sort of job which is nothing but the the, the script or packages which run some perform some sort of task for you and then underneath the job you have the step you could have multiple jobs you could have multiple stages you could have multiple state uh, steps as well all right let's start writing uh, the stages our first stage gonna be stages and underneath the stages I gonna have a single stage which is going to be build tf code looks okay and then I'm gonna put a display name as well display name is gonna be same probably copy it and paste it and then I'm gonna give a job and underneath the jobs you could have def uh, have a job just like the stages you have a uh, underneath a plural you could have a singular which is underneath the stages gonna be stage and same jobs and then job it's gonna be a build task for us and then the display name display name going to be probably I'm gonna give it a same display name probably don't want to put much energy over here uh, and then we have the steps remember underneath the job we should have a step and the steps should be okay check out the branch check out the repo and then if you want to persist the credential these are some of the optional however when you're getting started uh, with with the pipeline probably it is best to follow just 
the documentation and now what we want to do is we want to use the uh, the publish pipeline artifact so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use start using the tasks so underneath the steps you could have multiple tasks and then you should have multiple tasks so you see that you've got task over here you've got powershell task you've got powershell on machine task uh, you've got uh, publishing docker you've got docker task so all sort of tasks you have got just uh, uh, just if you enter command or control enter so what i want is a publish pipeline artifact pipeline artifact this is going to publish my artifact I'm gonna give it a display name which is gonna be publish terraform code this is gonna have an input inputs going to have a path now path is gonna have the by default variable we have which is system dot default working directory that's the by default variable which Azure DevOps gives us and then the artifact name of the artifact which we want to give is terraform build artif looks okay we have first stage done uh, let's create one more stage uh, generally in the real life scenario you would have multiple stages now this is just an example you could have just create your own stage and uh, uh, run run code bases on that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write another stage and I'm gonna make sure that I have got it identized properly stage and then underneath the stage what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the artifact I'm gonna give it a stage name and then I'm gonna give it a display name as well display name is download terraform artifacts artif yeah short form should be okay and then the same you've got your jobs underneath the jobs you've got a job the jobs gonna be again build and define a job name it's gonna be download code and then the steps steps and underneath the steps we would have some task task uh, did we have the same task over here yeah we have the publish artifact as well if you see the view yaml you should have you should see that okay this was the task which we used as well and then the publish path and so you could if you want you could just copy it from here as well and paste it right over here publish artifact alright so I'm just gonna type download and hit control enter and that's gonna give me all sort of task available uh, I'm gonna choose the download pipeline artifact artifact download pipeline artifact and the latest version which is at the rate 2 hit enter and then gonna use the input which is going to be your artifact name artifact name is the terraform build artif give it that name and then build version to download which is going to be latest and then the download download path which is going to be obviously system I wish it could give me auto completion it didn't so I'm gonna copy this and paste it right over here so we've got two stages the first one is the build TF code and the second one is the download terraform code uh, kind of looks okay let's probably push this 
and see if we have uh, any issues git add git commit and the message my first yaml pipeline looks okay git push all right uh, we've pushed the code let's go back to our pipeline and see if we have anything the first time you do it you generally you got to uh, create it manually so you go to the new pipeline and then you click the Azure DevOps pipeline and then um, just use the run button over here and it's gonna start building all the stages so you've got two stages build DF code and then the download terraform now if you start seeing the logs you are gonna have logs for environments building the code I'm gonna check out the repo for you uh, publish the terraform code and then uh, the downloads gonna be so you've got your artifact created just like we had in previous session uh, we have got all of our code right over here packaged in the form of an artifact and then the download code gonna download the artifact onto your working directory which is system dot default now if you start pushing it uh, pushing any code from your a pipeline or, or repo locally it's gonna automatically uh, build the continuous integration pipeline for you all right that was about it this is uh, was this was about how you could get started with writing your first Azure DevOps YAML pipeline uh, there's gonna be most more advanced level stuff coming up so stay tuned